Hi, I'm Riga. This is your right, and here I am, no joke, I am like two minutes before going to sleep. It is ten to six in the morning. I'm about to crash right now. I was just recording something else. And the Ruby Volume 8 mid-season trailer drops. Now, I'm not going to play the whole trailer for you. I'm not going to react to it in real time. I've seen it. But assuming you've seen it, let's have a quick chat about it because I've got thoughts off the top of my head. So let's go into it right now because it's happening right now. So let's go. So interestingly, I think it's fair to say that the first 15 seconds is just recap, but it's layered over the ideas Salem is putting forth and Salem's speech to Cinder talking about how, you know, she's always fought for what she wants and yet she was holding her back. Uh, of course, if you saw the, uh, the, the actual speech when it was delivered and you get the context of what's going on, it feels very manipulatory. It feels very much like Salem is taking advantage of Cinder. Very much like she's trying to get her on side by pretending their goals are aligned and that she understands. But it's interesting and uh, relevant to that point to say that this speech ends on the frame of Cinder taking Salem's hand with her grim arm. That, you know, you could be setting up for a lot of things. One of which, of course, a lot of people speculate is the, you know, the Cinder death because... You know, we did her backstory, so clearly we're setting up Cinder things, and anyone who knows at least cliche anime stuff says, oh, when a character gets a backstory and you're made to care about them, they're gonna die. I would hope that's not the case. I would really think that it's um, likely and hopeful that Cinder remains until one of the final bosses of the show. She deserves that, whether you like her or not, that is her position in the rank. It would be quite wasteful to throw her away, but you can't deny that reading of things, but however, that aside will continue through the trailer. Of course, the second major relevant image is after uh, hearing Ironwood speak, and he gives his address about how he would do what it takes no matter the cost, and obviously one of the main images laid under that, and one of our new images, is of course uh, Winter and the Aesops carrying out that bomb. So we can imply from that that at least uh, that I don't, I'm, I don't have a, a abbreviation for them, but our Yang, Jean, and um, Ren team that went to recover Oscar, or at least in the whale, possibly gone. I would, I would think that for tension, they're probably in there, didn't come back, and the team is going to deliver the explosive, and then we're on a time limit to get out of there because they never came back etc. That makes sense and it weighs into uh, Ironwood's whatever the cost motivation, right? I'm not going to dwell too much on it, but we then transition into Cinder pulling apart rubble. And if you look at, especially on the left, the sinew sort of shapes and the veiny shapes running across the roof, you get the feeling that this is on the whale. You see, I saw the uh, white things in the background and thought maybe there was an audience watching, like it was the Aesop or something, but no, it doesn't seem like that. It seems like Cinder has caused something to explode or something has exploded, possibly after the Jean etc. team has come in and caused something to fall apart in rubble or because of Cinder's actions they have, possibly in a fight, and she is unburying something. Perhaps even someone like Emerald, maybe Neo, who knows. Unless it's a prize, of course, she could be uncovering the lamp. Because as I've noted in some of my other videos, Salem doesn't have the lamp on her, which seems like an odd choice, but she clearly doesn't, so who knows? But since there is a raid happening on the whale, and given the veiny-like protrusions on the walls, this would feel like it is on the whale. And we know that Cinder... Well, I mean, Cinder wasn't on the whale, right? She was going after the others. So this is kind of strange. She was supposed to go after Watts, and we'll see a scene like that later. So this might be actually later in the season than you think it is, because this really does look like the whale if you look at the protrusions around. None of the, uh, the sort of Y-shaped blood patterning looks like something you would see on Atlas. Uh, even though some of the blue lights in the back do, so who knows? It is interesting, and we have rubble here which, uh, again, doesn't feel very on the whale. But you have those blue lights in the background, and if you watch, they're pretty static. And it's, of course, up to you if you choose to correlate that scene with the next scene that happens, which is Ruby rolling through dust. Because Ruby rolls through dust with, you know, some lights behind her in a spiral pattern. 
um, something inside me feels like that's at Schnee Manor because we cut from there to Penny waking up and there's a chance, you know, they have to fight, you know, possessed slash controlled Penny and Ruby ends up, you know, thrown through a wall or something and those lights aren't exactly what they seem to be because I can't see those lights being on the whale. They could be somewhere in Atlas, but where? And, you know, if we're at the Schnee Manor, maybe it's some decorative lights or something we're thrown into the lawn. I don't know. It's hard to say. Because if you look to the left, there's an outcropping. As if it were almost a stone structure, but the lights and those sort of things would definitely dictate a man-made structure, unless it's a mine or something. It's really hard to say. And yeah, of course I say it's back-to-back -back with Penny opening her eyes in that little gif that uh, was shared on Twitter if you were online at that time. But also, I think it's fair to say that Salem's voiceover at the time is her speech about whether you or my hound get to her first will have the Winter Maiden's power. Now, yes, that might, you know, uh, indicate, you know, wanting to harm Penny, but I think it's more so going to get her to open the vault than harm Penny, because, you know, priority, she wants that relic first. And then, under that, you get this moment here of this spewing grim we've never seen before. Um, again, it's hard to lock down exacts on this. Part of me really wonders if it is the Grim Contest winner, especially in its middle form, because uh, we've all been waiting to see it, and uh, it's spitting up all this gunk, which is sort of in line with the uh, Sentinel uh, Grim that we've seen. So maybe it's somewhat related to them, who knows, because if you have more sort of vermin slash, uh, is Rackton the right word? I guess insect based Grim, and then they all spit stuff, like, uh, you know, these ones are sort of. Um, I guess you don't really see that much fiery uh, input on it. If you look, it really does have more in touch with the Sentinel. It has like um, sort of pincers near the front and teeth reaching towards its center. But it does have markings on it, on its head and its chest that are like runic. I'm wondering if the Grim Contest winner went through a substantial change and is now sort of a grouped Sentinel piece. It is not, you know, beyond the realms of, well, you had this idea of something that comes together, but the solver fish weren't really working, so instead we group sentinels together because they're sort of an insect-like thing and make a, a separate form. Um, given there's a, it's sort of hard to see, there's a tree behind it in the background. I'm given to think it's either on the wasteland or it's out in the, uh, in the Schnee Manor. You know, it's somewhere where a cultured tree would grow, either wildland where nothing's around, even though it's very tundra out there, so maybe not, or something like the Schnee Grounds where there's a garden, etc. So, you know, things that might be looked after. And if you're going to deploy something like a mini boss like this, whether it be the Grim Winner or not, putting it on the Schnee Grounds, possibly, you know, chasing the uh, Winter Maiden and attacking them, that makes sense. You could even have a situation where the team is facing such a grim outside and then hacked Penny wakes up inside. Again, showing these things out of order as is pretty common for these kind of, uh, these kind of trailers. And the next section, just so we're going through it, you know, uh, in order, is May's speech about how this is not a situation where everyone wins, so you gotta choose what you're doing. But majorly under that is we finally see some prison break, which is Watts and Crow in their cells being overtaken by flame. Now, obviously that would definitely imply Cinder, you would think that is her mission as well. Again, separating her from what you saw earlier with her picking apart rubble. Um, in, except unless the lights behind her are actually somehow the base for where they are but it's weird that those veins that you will those vein like structures those y shapes would be on the ceiling of an atlas building in fact you know it doesn't seem like that at all unless something's happened to the facility but either way um you know that cinder has been sent to recover watts and she attacks everything with flame i don't know if cinder's maiden flame can overcome the hard light shields maybe perhaps she gives it a go and they blast off the shields and then she you know tries something else who knows but it's it's interesting and uh i am excited to see what happens when uh the prison break happens if crow is right there we could be getting a fight but obviously no one has weapons and cinder has her maiden powers and the hound's supposed to be on her heels as well so you know it's not looking good for anyone there you know robin's there as well but again both are unarmed so pretty pretty serious stuff and jacques there he could be cannon fodder who knows but we'll see 
at this point you then have Salem talking about how you know she'll have her staff and you're too late and uh you know that's a that's it sounds very plotting you know very um just usual villain plotting-y but you know I do like that she calls it my staff you know it, that sense of ownership like it already belongs to her but that's cut over images of um the lights on Schnee Manor igniting uh, I do wonder if if you've ever seen my assault on Schnee Manor video, which probably won't be, ha you know, which definitely almost won't be happening exactly as I said it in that video. But a version of it could be possible would be very interesting, especially with what we've said about Grim attacking the premises already. Uh, that could be really cool to see. And then you have this other shot of Hazel leaving uh, what seems to be Oz's torture chamber or, or, or Oscar's torture chamber in a very determined fashion. That could be really interesting to see. And uh, perhaps he is going to Oz Jin finally and uh, find out the truth for himself now that there are less things in his way with Mercury and Tyrion gone. These could be very interesting. Next, in terms of imagery, you do have the Hound on what really seems to be Schnee grounds, you know, that, that uh, very normal spiked fence sort of grounds barrier you would get around a manor, um, you know, and again, we have the Hound tailing Cinder, so we can almost assume Cinder breaks Watts out, then once Watts is free, they go after Penny, going after Penny arrives them at... Uh, Shnee Manor and her and the Hound attack Shnee Manor. Perhaps they call in backup, which is what that Sentinel Grim is. There are lots of dots you could add up here. And of course, this is the very streamlined, easy version that I'm putting out there. There could be much more complex versions of this. There could be much more intertwining ins and outs. I will say that you also get this image of Ruby looking very stunned against a wall. That wall definitely matches the color scheme of Shnee Manor, so perhaps she saw something arrive. Um, I don't think it's seeing Penny because her back wasn't to a wall, it's to a door. So you'd think perhaps, you know, a threat's just arrived and she's scared and shocked or some revelation has happened in front of her. Remember, let's not be fooled like we were with Yang's uh, desperate look. Remember that everyone was freaking out over what did Yang see, but it actually ended up she was just heading towards a cliff and, you know, we can all be scared at that. But yeah, there was definitely a, a, a slow, um, scared realization face on Ruby. So we should all be careful about that. And uh, it could mean something, especially with what we've seen from this other mystery Grim that seems like it's a Sentinel-based Grim, especially with what it spits and the appendages on its body. And then uh, knowing that Cinder and the Hound are both going after Penny, which we know is actually Manor, and this Hound image looks like it's actually Manor. And then finally, although I don't think it's technically finally, but, you know, mostly finally in terms of unique imagery we haven't seen before, you know, you have Penny reaching up from the ground, etc. You have Salem here about to press her thumbs into uh, Oscar's eyes. It looks like she's about to pull the mountain maneuver. But, um, yeah, it seems like there's fury there. So perhaps I'm thinking that Hazel has gone to ask the question and Salem has gone to interrogate what's happening and... Perhaps Oscar or Oz has boastfully let the uh, let the game slip, and uh, in fury, you know, uh, Salem has grabbed Oscar's head to be like, "What you told him, or why didn't you tell me, or what are you talking about?" You know, something like that. That could be very interesting to see. Um, definitely a legitimate interpretation of events. I do have a wonder how soon these events will be, because whether they're obvious or not, are they going to play out in the next two episodes or the next six episodes, you know? Because this whole volume takes place over one big incident, so where these events are placed and how they're paced out could be very interesting. I'm hoping they're all very close to the mid-season, you know, in the next episode or two, and there's still lots of things to roll on, because we have lots of unanswered questions about how how Ironwood will end up, what's going to happen to the staff, who will claim Penny, is what's still in control of Penny, um, because that is a real issue. I do think there's a good chance that uh, Ruby and the gang will get caught up fighting the Hound, possibly Cinder and this other Grim, and then uh, be hit from behind by Penny, who's already being controlled by someone like Watts, who's off screen, you know, who's doing his thing. So these are real issues, but, um, you know, I'm probably entirely wrong. Uh, if, you know, they've put some effort, a couple of weeks as they have, into uh, making this trailer, I'm sure it's very deceptive. You can tell that 
you know whatever footage they put under what dialogue will inform a lot of what the what the uh, the truth and the lies are. A lot of times, what you're seeing won't correlate to the speech that you're hearing. It just feels that way because oh, why would they play this footage under that speech? Well, because you don't uh, expect them to put two things unrelated together, and uh, you think they must be related, and they're not. But we can only do so much with assumption. So that being said. That was my sort of quick initial analysis slash reaction. We only have like, what, two weeks or so, maybe a little bit more, until uh, Volume 8 continues, but I'm very excited to see it. Uh, we've all been waiting on tenterhooks to get in there. So uh, I didn't say it at the beginning, but I'll say it at the end. YouTube things ding. Um, my name is Rigor. This is you all right. I hope you have a wonderful day. And until next time, remember that usually I have jokes prepared, but if you're going to release a video like this when I should already be asleep, I won't have the funnies for you. But I will have them when we continue the volume. So please be sure to join me then. Please look after yourself until then. I hope everyone, yourself, your family, your friends, and everyone you know included is having a good time, and everyone you don't know as well. Hope we're all in good health, hope we're all in good spirits, and uh, I wish you all the best. Please join me as we continue down Ruby Volume 8. I promise I've got some crazy stuff coming, and we'll react to the official stuff as it comes, plus all kinds of anime and random movie and all kinds of stuff as we go. I'll stop rambling, but my name is Rigor. hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope I did alright.